Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Warno. This time we are on to the quarterfinals of the SD League Championship. This is Division 4. Um, there are four divisions, 1, 2, 3, 4. One being the quote-unquote pros and four being the relatively new players to the game. I believe they had to have started under rank 1500 or outside of rank 1500 in 1v1 ranked matches. So today we have a best of three between Pasta La Vista and Farid Akhmanid. Uh This will include all the games in the series, so best of three, first to two. If the person wins in two, there'll only be two games. If the person uh, wins in three, then it'll be a much longer video. So some of these videos you can probably tell if they're a two-game video or a three-game video just based on the link. Uh, for spoilers, I won't spoil anything in the beginning, but if you look at the timestamps, you will see spoilers there because I will be timestamping the different games in there. So if you don't want to know who wins, don't look at the timestamps whatsoever or don't look at the length of video. I don't know. It's the internet. You probably know who's won, but this is just me casting the games and getting the Division 4 games out there since they don't get much coverage. Um, so over here we have uh, Pasta La Vista is the red player on the right over here. He is playing 79YA. And then on the left, blue player is Farid. I'm going to call him Farid instead of Farid Akhmanid. Uh He is playing the second infantry, so the good old British over there. And they are playing on two leaks. While I go over bands, I'll put up their rosters or their deck builds on the screen right now. Um, and you'll see Pasta on the right and Farid on the left. They banned Mount River and Airport. And then as far as divisions banned, the 101st Airborne was banned, 35th BDV, 2nd Panzer, and 11E Parachutiste. Nobody likes those French. Just kidding. Everybody loves the French, and the new French division looks, uh, it looks interesting. It looks pretty, pretty cool. As far as deployment, so red player, I believe this is considered the easier side, is the red player side. Um, it's, yeah, it's uh, pretty easy to put pressure on blue player's zone of capture, and then Oscar's just like kind of out by itself. Whereas uh, it's much harder for blue, at least in my experience, to attack over here. But we're not going to spend too long on that. I'm just going to show you sort of where... Pasta La Vista is pushing, and yes, he's pushing up into Zulu, well beyond Lima. And then the other side, he's got one CV going to Papa, and then he's pushing troops up to Oscar. So you can see he's really putting it, putting the pressure on Farid early. As far as what Farid is doing, hopefully you can see this, he's not pressuring Red like Red is pressuring him. He's moving up into his objective, Zulu. And then he's got a CV moving up to X-Ray. He has a troop. Looks like they're taking positions in Zulu or X-Ray. I don't know if I would do that early on. It's going to be hard for Red to just bypass Oscar, really. Um, yeah, and he doesn't have much going to Oscar whatsoever. So it looks like Red is going to take Oscar pretty much unimposed and then put pressure on Zulu, and Farid is going to be defending Zulu. So let's dive right on in to this best of three. At this point in the battle, I would like to ask all of you to please comment, subscribe, like, all of that good YouTube jazz. It really does help get these videos out there. Uh, as some of you may know, I, I hit my thousand subscriber mark a while back, and then for personal reasons, I was not recording videos for six months, and YouTube absolutely hates that. So any help you guys can give, which a simple like really, really helps. And then just a basic comment. Uh, if any of you watch Hippie, you know that he asks, you know, just a simple GG really helps the algorithm. Or if you just uh, say that you like Pasta. Although Pasta is the self-proclaimed best player in Warno in the world, and... Uh, can't remember what happened between him and Hippie's video for the number one title. So you can see here, uh, Farid has his SAS in in the town, so that's going to make, hopefully, 
Pasta realizes that and doesn't just rush his troops forward because they will die. And then over here, um, Pasta's already into the town, and then Spetsnaz versus SES. Uh, looks like Micro is on point, except maybe this Moto Strelke unload there would be good. And looks like he is giving it a change command. Having the BMPs behind the infantry, really good fire support. This Spetsnaz, however, looks like it's been found by the Challenger. This uh, Rapier moving up. So, you know, not bad on Parade's part. I mean, that's a pretty formidable defense. That's going to be a tough nut to crack over here. However, the problem is that Pasta has his CV moving up to this objective over here, and he's fortified it pretty well, um, especially considering what forces Farid has. I mean, I don't understand this machine gun over here. Maybe it's to stop a road attack that way. I feel like I would just go down, uh, go this way, because once you control the center, it's a lot easier. Um, I think this links, where is this links going? Okay, so that, those best knots gone. If red can control this forest here, it's absolutely devastating to blue, because if you can get AT gems in this forest onto this road, you basically can't reinforce that position. And there goes the CV over here. Uh, Gazelle Command Helicopter. It's got to land very, very quickly. And it's dead. Okay. Uh, pretty, pretty bad over there. It's not looking good for Farid on that side. Um, however, that being said... Oh, I guess that is Red's, um, Red's objective. Because... We are at a plus zero, so yeah. Two Lakes is a very interesting map. It would be nice if there were a couple more objectives on the map, because really, this is where the combat always happens, or Blue fights over Oscar, so maybe it's Blue has an easier time than Red. But I feel like this tree zone right here is so devastating to Blue if red can take those trees that was a nice hit on the tdbv and there's no aa over here to take care of that there's a tunguska coming up but i mean that'll be better for the lynx helicopters he is pushing into here the problem though is if this push fails and is pushed back i'll breach on the tdbv over there um, Pasta La Vista has absolutely nothing to stop Farid from pushing into his objective over there. Um, but, ah, uh, see, like, I, I would like, I would like Farid to take up positions more along these trees. I think that would be better for him. And put some pressure on, is it Oscar? Yeah, Oscar. And then Zulu and Lima. You'll have to forgive me as I still learn these maps. Um... I said this was Division 4 quarterfinals, and uh, I am definitely a Division 4 style player. Still learning the game, trying to learn the different maps. Uh, very cheeky move by Pasta over here. Getting his CV into a good position. Oh. Oh. You can see that sliver. It was just barely in line of sight of those air mobile absolutely brutal that there was a tiny sliver that the air mobile could see that cv and it got the shot off with the law 80 absolutely brutal uh tunguska's well it looks like they're firing into the air mobiles one of the cool changes to the patches is allowing these self-propelled anti-aircraft guns with the auto cannons to fire at ground targets which is good because that's something that uh you'd very much do Except if there are air targets in the vicinity, then you would save your ammunition to fire at the air targets. Uh, that cheeky gazelle over there landed, so it can't be shot at. And then these links are just out of range of the Tunguska by the looks of it. Oh yeah, just, well, hard to see sometimes with that circle and uh, 3D height. So over here, these troops kind of uh, useless at the moment, and Farid's not doing anything, so these troops are also useless, and that is useless. That's the problem with the left side of this map, is it, it can become very, very 
like wasted resources. However, it's not a crazy amount of resources there. Uh, if you want to look like 50, 50 points, 45 points, 15 and 15. So barely over 100 points used to control that, which is good. Uh, Tunguska taking down... A li oh my god, look at that kill feed of those links. Holy cow. Absolutely murdered those links. That is... That, that feels bad. Um, and Farid, I mean, he's doing a good job holding, but you're never going to win just holding. Well, that being said, he's got 163 points to 13 points. So in theory, he could win by just holding. But it's very uh, scary situation to just let your opponent attack. Now, I feel like Pasta, he, he's making ground. He's got his Saperi and then his Motostroki, more Motostroki. He's got command vehicles to basically heal up his troops. Now that command vehicle has to be careful as it dies to this Rover Milan that has perfect line of sight to them. Absolutely perfect. That one should get out of line of sight in time. And yeah, the ATGM goes astray. One of the one of the things you can do versus ATGM vehicles is just move it slightly out of line of sight. Now, what is the has good stealth? Yeah, that was the question I was going to ask. Was what is the stealth of the Rover Milan? And this BMP2 not long for this world, and it goes down. You can still see the burning wreckages of those Lynx helicopters, absolutely devastating there. More... Oh gosh, oh, that's just so brutal. Uh, this is a really good way to, you know, stop the enemy from attacking you, is to cover basically this inlet into town. However, Hostel of Vista does have a foothold, he just no longer has supplies to replenish his troops, and then nothing is happening on the left. This challenger going into the town, I don't really know what it's going to do there. Uh, more supply moving up. That is... That is a scary sight. That is an up-vetted T-80 BVD, or BVIZD. Um, that Challenger 2 doesn't really stand a chance if it's a long-range duel. If it gets up closer, Challenger might do well. Uh, ricochet off of the essentially a 50 cal. Well, uh, 7.62. That is not a 50 cal. That is not a 50 cal whatsoever. That's just a heavy machine gun, basically. Does he have... The equivalent of 50 cows? No, these are all just, I believe they're iPod. I'd have to go look at the card, but I believe they just, oh no, uh, I mean, this doesn't necessarily mean it, is it? Well, okay, it does. It does mean it's a tripod. All right. So yeah, it's classified as a heavy machine gun then on the tripod. ATGM coming in, is it going to take that out? Oh, hit the challenger. Okay. I thought it was going for this rover. That would have been devastating to lose that. A good placement of the Milan. I don't know if it sees the T-80 though. It does. Okay, any smoke? No smoke. And a nice hit on that T-80. Spetsnaz over there getting stunned. However, incoming firepower from BMP-2s. Not sure what that Strela is doing. It's uh, getting into the line of fire. That T-80 needs to get out of there. It will get out of there because it's routed, but that's not the decision of Pasta La Vista. Once again, left side of the battlefield, nothing going on whatsoever. It is just a fight for Zulu. Now, BMP-2s, absolutely amazing vehicles. And just laying it on. Now, here comes a... Milan from this warrior should be able to fire back in oh, one shot, one kill. That's uh, that's what happens when you've got that much veterancy on your tanks. They they hit what they shoot at. 
Uh, that T-80 has more veteran C, so I wonder, just looking at the decks over there, uh, it's got, it's received that veteran C through kills. Because at the deck lists, T-80s just have two bars of veteran C as opposed to the three that it has here. Most everything else just is the one bar of veteran C, but the T-80 BV IZDs have those extra extra pips of veteran C keep them nice and alive. I mean, they're they're expensive, 275 points a pop. I mean, a regular T-80 BV, also 265. It's kind of the power of some of these Soviet decks is these T-80s are absolutely nasty. The long range try MLRS firing. Where is it firing? Into town over here, man. If only he had spotted these guys. How? Oh! I don't even know if he knew that that command vehicle was there, but that was that was a nasty, nasty hit with the MLRS taking out the command vehicle. I don't fully understand this smoke screen. I feel like that benefits Pasta La Vista more. Like Pasta La Vista is actively using this smoke screen. Uh, for himself, I mean, I guess it, because these guys are coming in, it takes out the fire support from Pasta La Vista, so there is that. But I feel like he was able to move his T-80s and BMP-2s into a better fire position, and yeah, now look, like, they are just raining hell down upon the SES, the Air Mobile Scouts. There is this Challenger Mark II, but it has terrible line of sight just down the road. Um... And this fire support, I mean, he's lost his infantry push, but he's moving more infantry up forward. 7.62 unloading upon them. Would like these BMPs to maybe move forward, but then they might take some nasty shots from these Rover Milans. But do they have any ammo left? They do not. So, are you really... Oh, okay, what is going on over here? That is a lot of Lynx helicopters that Farid has built up. What air defenses does he have over here? I mean, he's got Estrella, he's got a Tunguska. Is that it? That feels really light. No Tunguska over here. Oh, wow, if he could see how many Lynx helicopters were over here, it would be interesting. Still not a fan of uh, nothing going on over here. However, I do feel like Pasta La Vista has a decent setup. However, he needs to heal up those Spetsnaz because they're kind of useless. Um, smoke screen still going out. I, I guess looking at what is going on, it is disrupting the fire support that Pasta La Vista is able to bring to help out. Oh, that cluster. Oh my goodness, that was two T-80s. It only says one because for whatever reason the game only does one when you kill two, but that was two T-80s with one cluster bomb. And I mean, that's 255 points for at a minimum 550 or 540 points, I should say at a minimum, depending upon what. T80 it was, but I believe at least one of those T80s was a BV IZD. So that was that was a nasty cluster run. Absolutely devastating. Uh this is good. This Milan 2 is in a good spot. That BMP2 should die. Or not. <laughs> or not. Uh smoked off, so it will live. Oh, that that feels bad. That that BMP2 was on no health to start with. And did not get anything. Uh, these supply trucks being sold off, and then HE coming in to push back the attack. Very nice, and looks like some BMPs. Oh no, that was all the most rookie going down there from that fire. So that time it showed all three, as opposed to the cluster bomb. These Lynx helicopters, not quite sure what their plan is. They have a bunch of toes. And then more HE bombers coming in. See, I feel like the Lynx could definitely help. Oh, he's he saw the Strella and he took it out. 
did lose one Harrier, lost the other Harrier. Harrier, these cobs in the back doing a good job taking them down. Still smoking off this tree line? Lots of supply being used for that smoke, I would imagine. Well, it's got 110 rounds, so... Maybe not, but... I mean, it, it's sort of working because he can't sit in this tree line and fire support his infantry pushes, and he's losing a lot of men. Problem is, Farid is not doing anything else on the battlefield, so it's just a meat grinder over here. Warrior Milan's moving up. Not good. Uh, close quarter fighting over there. Yeah, I figured that would happen. And then just overwhelming numbers. However, that ATGM... Did it get something? I'm not sure, but both those Milan's down. Problem is... Hasta La Vista just has a lot of forces over here. How does this cluster do? Or was that an HE? Yeah, it was a Tornado HE. I was about to say, that didn't seem very impressive for cluster bombs. Oh, nice snipe by the rover Milan over there. Didn't quite get it though. Um, there's too much AA over here now. You've got Tunguska, although he needs to resupply his... AA because he is out of shots. They only have three. Where is this guy going? Looks like that is moving up. More Motostroke BMPs moving up. So Pasta really needs to figure out what he wants to do. Because Farid seems very content sitting in here. To me, this is the time where you would bring up some... Uh, he doesn't have much artillery. Just looking at his deck. He's only got the two uh, Gavodskas. I probably butchered that pronunciation, but I believe they're the 152s, 155s. Forget what the Russians use for their weapons. So, Lynx helicopter is over here on attack order onto the right. There is no AA over there. If he can spot, I wonder, I haven't looked much at this. He sees the Tunguska there. Uh, well, he at least knows where it is. Then Pasta La Vista... Oh, he sees all of these links. He sees this Challenger, too. What is spotting that Challenger? Is it these Spetsnuts? That's interesting. Wow, yeah, he... So, like, these Lynx helicopters, he knows about them. He knows they're back there. Uh, this go back into neutral. <laughs> Lots of supply. Holy moly. Uh, that is that is a supply rush if I've ever seen one. He see like that's the problem. He sees those helicopters. Oh, I love. What was it? This MLRS. That is a different type of uh, mortar that does. I might have been the MLRS, but there, there was some, uh, like, the cluster type munitions that go off, and I love those type of artillery pieces. But I don't think the English have those. I think that is more of a Russian thing. So I might have been seeing stuff. Might have been seeing secondary explosions over there. Um, that is... That is a lot of resources to be clumped up in one little area. I believe this is the last of his T80DB IZDs. He doesn't have... He only has four of them in his deck. I believe he's lost two of them already. Oh no, there's the third. So earlier that cluster must have killed one IZD and one BV. He is pushing up though. Uh, this smoke screen... I mean, I, I guess I have to give it to him. It's been working. Problem is, this is going down. This guy is doing a good job of sitting just out of AA range. Well, these, oh, they do have missiles ready. But getting him out of there and going back to his giant supply depot over there. Looks like he is starting to push over here, which as I said earlier, if you can take this, you can cut off the blue player's reinforcements. 
bringing up links. Oh my goodness. Needs to land. Oh, that hurts. Is it spinning? Ouch. Absolute ouch. That Tunguska. Devastating. Absolutely devastating over there. This uh, AT bomber sees the challenge from Mark 2. There's no anti aircraft over here. There's this rape here. But. Yeah, not doing much. I mean, doesn't kill the challenger, but that's pretty good damage in this rapier. No! Oh no! It's been spotted, that BMP-2 with an extraordinary snipe. However, that BMP-2 is going to take it in the side and dies from that Milan too. That is an arguably terrible position, but it worked. Uh, Tunguska taken out but just look at those losses there tornado links challenger links 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 uh this strella doing work on this side very good job moving the strella up to help this push because that was a lot of links attack helicopters over there and you you want to take this ouch supply dead you want to take this forest right here uh, because as soon as you do that, taking Zulu so much easier. Uh, ATGMs just flying back and forth. MRS firing somewhere. Oh, okay, so it was the MLRS that does the, the cool... They explode and then it's a bunch of cluster munitions that explode out of it. I like those. They just look cool. I don't know if they're actually any good, but I like I like what they do. They're really good when people use them against me, that's for sure. That is for sure. Hide that panel. Oh, sorry if that panel bugs you guys. I am trying to show off the entire map, but nothing is happening on that right side. It is just a battle for Zulu. And MLRS, that was devastating. If he gets one more, oh, one more, and that would have been in the, a very expensive T-80 down. I mean, it killed Estrella and a BMP-2. This is not a in a very good spot. But there are two air mobiles moving up. Um, Chinook supply, this smoke screen, he's just keeping it up. He's just screening off here so that Pasta La Vista can't fire support. So my critique of it, maybe, maybe it's been beneficial this battle. I'm not sure. It just feels really weird because usually as an attacker, you would smoke off the enemy, but you'd more smoke off like a side, move in and then have fire support behind it. Easier said than done because I'm absolutely terrible at that. But T-80 BVK does get into position now it's just a matter of getting short-ranged laws take it out, but he has Motostroki backing it up. He has fire support in BMP-2s and those BMP-2s catching those air mobiles out. I don't think this air mobile will get to that T-80. It's blocked by these houses here. So this is what Pas La Vista needs, however, he needs to support over here. He does have the firepower. There's nothing over here from blue. And if he can take this, oh, that cluster, that cluster. Oh, that could have been so much worse for red player. Because look how grouped up. I mean, this this is a blob if you've ever seen one. But very good foothold. Now the smoking here, he needs to change. Uh, okay, I, I get it. No, it was because the BMPs were fire supporting down here, but he has nothing moving over here anymore. So that smoke barrage doesn't, it's not going to do anything. Not at all. Um, BMP2's moving up, T80 moving up. He needs a supply truck over here though, because that T80. Um, oh man, that Milan. Ouch. Expensive loss right there. BMP-2 and a T-80 down in one hit. Absolutely devastating. I mean, these guys are... Feels like they're just bleeding resources. High 
expensive resources. I don't know about this move over here. He looks like he's finally trying something on the left, but two air mobiles is not the answer. You need a much larger push than that. Is moving his scouts forward. I mean, he's losing this, but really he needs to get troops in these trees so red player doesn't, but neither player going for these trees. I I guess this Milan doing a good job of covering any push over there, but I mean, just look at if you take this tree position, the fire zones you have down that road, it, it's pretty devastating. And then if you can move even further down the trees. And then the other thing is if you can secure those trees, then you put pressure onto this objective over here. As you can see, there is nothing protecting this objective. Absolutely nothing. We do have a small buildup of troops over here, but I'm curious to see if possible Vista, he can not see any of that. What can he see? He sees those supply trucks. That's nasty. Although, I don't think they have any supply left. One of them does. One... Two of them barely have supply left. I feel like he is... Getting to the end of his supply over here, possible V stuff. Right, here we go. This is a weird little push. It's really, really slow. Plus La Vista with the plus one tick, and he has a very nice foothold, but I was talking about, I feel like he's really low on supply. All of these men they are not looking good whatsoever. There's only four guys. Uh, they're they're getting chewed up. I mean, they should probably lose this firefight because there's there, yeah, there's just not enough of them left. He really needs to resupply these guys in order for them to be combat effective. That was devastating. I didn't actually see what happened there. But I can see two BMPs and a T-80 destroyed, uh, so not good whatsoever. Are you trying a push over here? His Saxons going in first. Uh, I mean, it's one way to get your Saxons killed, that's for sure. HE bomber going in for this Milan. Good sighting, and that should be a dead Milan. Poof. I, I love, love the attacks by the artillery. It's always cool looking. TDBV getting the heck out of dodge. Is it taking a cheeky shot from something? Not sure. Where are you going? I'm not really sure. It, those Saxons just... He got one. And the Strella didn't do anything. This Gazelle needs to land. <laughs> the Gazelle needs to stay out of line of sight of that guy. Otherwise, it's going to go down. This push just... Too little, too late. And you can see Pasla Vista bringing SU-25 up, and there's no anti-aircraft over here, so... These air mobiles are about to die. Oh, and it tried to get a cheeky shot off of that gazelle, but it failed. So there goes one air mobile. I mean, not the greatest use. I would turn it back and try to... Uh, okay, well, there's a phantom, so... Never mind, but that phantom should go down. I mean, it's basically down. Tunguska doing work, but... That Milan needs to get into a better position. That Tunguska also needs some friends. Because it's not going to be doing a crap ton. T-80. Oh, maybe that Tunguska saved the T-80. I'm not sure. Cluster bombs coming in. Yeah, no. There's no support for these guys. So it just feels very, very bad. Cluster munitions, not the greatest against infantry. But Farid has pushed back over here. And he did take out that Conkers, so very light over here now. I mean, this is a 
very light push. And there's not much coming up. There's two CVs coming up. I feel like that is not going to go well. This SU-25... I'm not sure exactly what it was trying to do. It still has air-to-ground missiles, but this Harrier is on its tail. The Harrier goes down to this Strel, I believe. Or Coop. Or MiG. Good attack run on Lynx. There is a Phantom F3 though, however there is a MiG to intercept. Oh, SU-25 probably going down, but this F3 Phantom will live? Question mark? Alright, T-80 coming from this side now. Oh, and he's got his expensive T-80s over there. Oh my goodness, if he could just move up a little bit more. I mean, maybe it's more important to keep him in that position, but these Milans... Man, if he, if he got up into these trees, he would see the javelin, the mortars, the supply, and have a nasty group in the back line, especially if those Svetsnots were alive and with them, but... Very, very interesting development of this battle. You can see that Basla Vista barely clinging on over here. He does have a T-80 in a good... Po oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, this poor challenger. The Dushka is lighting up the Lynx, which is hilarious. Oh, okay. It gave his position away, so Challenger got the first shot. Challenger should get the second sh Mutual destruction. That was a Challenger CV2. Oh, that feels so bad. That's technically a much better trade for Pasta La Vista than it was for... Or Farid. I, sh I shouldn't even say technically. It just was. I mean, the CV Challenger, 270 points. T-80 BV, T 265. But regardless of the 5-point difference in the trade, it's a CV. And you only have so many CVs. I, I think Farid only has... I'm looking at his list right. He only has 5? I don't know if he has many left. I think he has this rover... Oh no, I think he only has... He's lost a lot of CVs. And he only has five. He... Oh, no, no, he must have seven. Where is this on his list? He has seven. So he's got two of the uh, motorized air, air mobiles. So I don't know how many are left in his list. Uh, this is good. Using these MIs to protect... Because you know that there's no anti-aircraft over here, at least you believe there's no anti-aircraft over here. There's this rapier that's done. It's fired one missile the entire battle. If this rapier moved up with that push earlier and got over here, it would be great. Uh, this fox is not long for this world. Oh, get, get a little bit further. There you go. Yep, fox is dead. That's pretty bad um, that he's got the T-80 there because now Farid can't... All these guys are going to die unless he micros them. And as basically a Division IV player myself, that's most likely not going to happen. And we can see it in action right here. So any reinforcements that he has coming in, just going to get absolutely obliterated. And there goes an SU-25. Just like pour salt on the wound, why don't you? Although, I, I think actually because he blew up, or he did dismount, um, those clusters were off target. Now, he does have to deal with this. He has horses over here. Eh, kind of. It's not great. Was he attacking? Oh, he sees. He sees it. But there's... I was gonna say, there's AE assets, and sure enough, uh, like, how poetic. The aircraft that came in to kill you, like, is this burning wreckage right behind you. I mean, in real life, 
That would kill you right there. It landed basically on top of you. Uh, it would be really cool in this game if the downed aircraft would do damage when they crashed. Although, I bet people would rage at that, of like the randomness of like, oh, it randomly fell on top of my anti-aircraft asset. That feels rigged. Uh, SU-25 is doing bombing runs though, and there's no AA over here. And yeah, Paz La Vista finally did what I said earlier. Took this tree line. He's cut off. I mean, he's basically cut off all reinforcements. This is bad. This is really bad. I mean, he's got the rapier. Will the rapier hit this? I mean, it doesn't have... Oh, it's just a scout one. Okay. But... This challenger has multiple T-80BVs, and if it goes down, I mean, Farid does not have many CVs left. That'll be his last challenger, and yeah, it's, it's going down. It's dead. And then just with these T-80s in these tree lines, no reinforcements are going up this road. And then this guy, I don't know what he's doing. He's... He said nope. He said nope. He does not want anything to do with that road. And then Pasta La Vista finally takes this over here and Farid, I believe, ends the game. So that was game one, a victory to Pasta La Vista. Uh, look at that kill to death ratio there, 1.391 to... Point seven two. Let's see if we can find any major heroes over here. BMP2 doing work for sure. Oh my, we found the hero of the Soviet Union here. This Tunguska. I remember the Lynx death, but man, it took out everything. And uh, I remember this bringing in the air mobiles and they got absolutely whacked this t80 bv insane kill list i mean i just love t80s and bmp2s they're so powerful in this game so so powerful i mean you can just see like his best units are his t80s and his bmp2s along with that insane tunguska absolutely insane and then over here air mobiles doing well uh some of his aircraft doing okay Air mobiles, air. Oof, that's that's an amazing air mobile right there. Tornado, Milan twos, but yeah, pretty pretty devastating here. So that's it for game one. We'll dive right on in to game two. Here we are on game two between Pasta La Vista and Farid Akhmenid. This is a best of three series, and the winner of this moves on to the semifinals. So we have Pasta La Vista here with Berlin Command and Farid with 4th Motoschutzen. So Pasta La Vista is blue player this time and Farid is red player and they are playing on urban front lines. Uh, I'll put up both of their deck lists over here. So I will have Farid red player on the right and Pasta blue player on the left over here. Uh, while I go over what they banned, so map bans were exactly the same as the first round. Neither one of them likes Mount River or Airport. And for the banned divisions, they banned 2nd Panzer, 35th VDD, 101st Airborne, and 11 Parachutist, which is the identical bans that they had in round one of this matchup. So very interesting. I, I don't know if they scouted each other and saw what they played, but... The literal exact same bands as before. So over here you can see that Farid, he is, he's pushing, I mean he's going for Charlie, which is good because Charlie is the outlier here. Uh, you get, well in India is actually technically blues if I recall, because you have four one point of your own, so Echo Delta Bravo Alpha is, in theory, Farid's, or red players. And then India Hotel Golf Foxtrot is, in the theory, blue players. And then Charlie is sort of no man's land. It's the tiebreaker to say. Now, you could always, you know, consolidate, take these four, take these five, 
push up, um, take these, you know, many, many ways to do it. But in theory, Charlie is no man's land over here. So you can see Farid's movements over here. He is very much going for India and Echo and then pushing up into Charlie. He does have a CV going Delta Bravo, not much going over to Alpha. Now, oh, one of those actually was was Mr. Pasta La Vista over here. Pretty much same thing over here, but not pushing into like Alpha per se. So there will be a meetup in India. This pathing here is absolutely atrocious. Hopefully he micros it and realizes it before his guy dies over there. But looks like pretty good CV coverage. And then there should be a fight for Charlie in the middle. So we will get started with this match. Just a little reminder, I would very much appreciate a like or subscribe or just a good game or even a Quicksilver Gaming you need to get better at casting or the game itself, although those hurt my feelings and make me eat a tub of ice cream and cry in the corner with my two kitties. But we will be doing a lot more of this SD League stuff. It's pretty fun. Pretty fun. I don't know exactly if it's something I will do forever and always, but doing this SD League's uh, Division 4 is it's a very fun seeing how other people play in a competitive format, especially other people with similar skills to myself. I hope to get a lot better at this game, but that takes a lot of time and practice unless you're just absolutely gifted. Amazing. Which I might be gifted and amazing, but that's what my mom tells me. And I don't think it applies to Warno or any other aspects of my life. Um, over here, Sniper in a pretty good position. Jaeger Metis uh, getting over there. Falsham Jaeger Metis getting into this building. So it'll be a firefight between the two, I think. I don't... Uh, they, yeah, they, they'll probably win. I don't think that Jaeger is... Yep, okay. He is microing them into the buildings, which is... What he should do because these are shock troops and they will absolutely destroy that Jaeger. However, MI8 <laughs> might destroy them back, but there is something firing at them and it is these Mistrals. Mistrals, I'll absolutely love Mistrals. Now, over here, MI8 taking out these Berlin rifles with the terrible pathing, as I said. So they probably die. They will probably die. This sniper actually. Is it winning the duel with the Ofklar? Looks like it is. And... What? Did the, the sniper took out the helicopter? Okay. That would be like a, an amazing Call of Duty moment, right? <laughs> Just uh, sniping the helicopter out of the sky. So, things not going well at all for Farid. Uh, looks like, I mean, Pasta La Vista looks like he's taking the center. He's got Mistrals in these buildings, Sniper over here, he's got another Mistral moving up. AMX 30s, which are just amazing infantry support vehicles. And then he's got Berlin Rifles, Light Rifles, looks like he lost all of his Special Forces at the start, but that's fine, they did their job. And... Yeah, it's not not going well for Farid whatsoever. I mean, he's lost basically the entire front line. He's got a little bit over here using a napalm to take out these Berlin rifles. And it doesn't even take it out. That feels bad when your board presence is like this. And that's not, you know, not saying he did the wrong thing, even though I am saying he did the wrong thing. But that's something that like a Division 4 player like myself does, and unfortunately there you can see that Farid's opener just went so poorly. There wasn't much coming back from that. I also think that Pasta Vista chose the right deck for this map, and probably fighting 4th Moto shoots in. Yeah, that, that, was, that was rough. That was absolutely rough. I mean, if we just look at the beginning, right? So MI8 killed a rover. Okay. You know, Nighthawk killing Jaeger, Jaeger. Oh, I didn't realize he bought the Nighthawks. 
But you look down here. This is so lopsided at the beginning of the game. And that that's what causes that's what causes Farid to basically surrender there. So rather unfortunate, but I felt like game one was pretty good. I felt like it could have gone either way for a while there, but just as I said, that uh that tree line, once you get around Zulu into those trees, it's kind of game over for blue player, and I don't know if red player has the same problem on the opposite edge, except for Oscar being a little bit problematic. Um, but on this map, Las La Vista just took that central location, I believe it's called Charlie, and absolutely decimated all of the troops that were out there for Fareed, so Fareed giving up uh, makes sense. You know, I mean, there's a difference between a Division 4 and a Division 1 player, right? Like, a Division 1 player could probably come back from that. But a Division 4 player, it, it's really hard for newer players to attack. It's, like, one of the harder things to master as a newer player, even though it's not necessarily that difficult once you get the hang of it. But I myself am terrible at attacking, and if you can't gain a foothold and your opponent absolutely whacks you as a newer player, it's just a lot harder for you to understand how to crawl and dig yourself back into this game. And yeah, I, I think Farag made that calculation. So Farid, sorry. So that is it for the quarterfinals between Pasta La Vista and Farid Akhmenid. Uh, we will see Pasta La Vista in the semifinals. He is the self-proclaimed number one Warno player in the world, and I believe him and Hippie had a duel off to see who really is the number one player in the world. Um, and for those of you that don't understand, I am being facetious there. I am joking, uh, even though they, they do joke about that a lot. Um, I don't think any of them truly believe that, especially, you know, Pasta, Pasta's, he's got a good foundation, but he's got a ways to go, but definitely, definitely looks like a good Division 4 player with a bright future ahead of him in the competitive war no scene so we shall see pasta in the semifinals and our next quarterfinals will be coming out on monday so that should be tomorrow from when this airs and then we will have the entire quarterfinals shown and then we will dive into the semis and then into the finals hope you guys enjoyed this let me know what you think and as i requested before i would absolutely love a like or just a comment, it could be as much as possible. Vista is my favorite Warno player in the world, and he is obviously the number one Warno player. That's that's a lot more than a GG. You could just write GG, or I love turtles. That also works too. So that is it for today's episode. As always, guys, until next time.